What is up guys, Zach in here, and in today's video, I'm going to break down exactly, step by step, the ultimate guide for cold calling motivated sellers, the ultimate guide for having conversations with motivated sellers, and most importantly, everything, a complete mini course today. I promise you guys, everything I say in this video, I could probably condense it, sell it for $9.97 on a sale or something, and have thousands of people buy it. But what I want to do is just give this out to the wholesaling real estate industry, give this out to the wholesaling real estate community, so you guys can know exactly how to cold call, guys. We are taking the power away from the gurus and to the people because this is what it's all about. This is what I'm here to share. This is what I'm here to get, just break down, and this is why I'm excited to help the people out learn wholesaling real estate for free, and most importantly, so y'all can listen on how to actually cold call. I tell everybody, hey, go to freewholesaling.com, learn cold calling. I'm like, you know what? Why don't I just bring the content at freewholesaling.com to you, to this YouTube video today, and that is what I want to do today. So that's why I'm excited, jacked up, ready to go. Help y'all out here. So this is what I want to do, guys. I want to make y'all a bunch of money in wholesaling real estate. And how do I do it? Well, what's the best way to make money in wholesaling real estate? Cold calling, right? Getting on those dang phones and getting these deals. So let me share with you everything you need to know about cold calling. But before I break it down, do me a big favor. Make sure you smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell too so you're notified when I get live. It's very important, guys. I go live at different times sometimes. So it's hit the bell, right? And comment below your questions. Obviously, love people uh, asking questions. Hop on the one-on-ones and love to help everybody out here. So if you're ready to go, if you're excited to learn wholesaling real estate, excited to become a cold calling expert, I'm going to share exactly the hidden secrets that make me millions of dollars too that most gurus never even share. If you're ready to go, ready to go, let's break it down. It's wholesaling time, baby. Woo! <laughs> Fuck out of bed, bitch, go. Get up, get up, and they got gold on. Gotta wake up, gotta wake up, bitch, get up. Get up, get up, get up. Get up. Get up. All right, we're ready to go. Get to cook water and um, we're ready. So let's break everything down, guys. Let's share it. I'm super excited because I know so many people, they're trying to get into wholesaling real estate, right? They're trying to change their life. They're trying to change everything going on and seeing how their life can be changed in wholesaling. And that is what I want to do today, guys. That is what I want to share. That's what I want to break down. That's what I want everybody to know. So without further ado, let's get it going, guys. Let's break this all down. I'm excited. We got so many people on here. Uh, so we're ready to go. Quick audio check and we're set. So, yep, audio is all good. So without further ado, let's break down how to cold call, guys. I'm telling you, this is the perfect time to get into cold calling. This is the perfect time to get into all of it. So you might be asking yourself, who is this guy? Why is he screaming? Or why is he telling you to get wholesaling? What does he know about cold calling, right? Well, if you don't know me, my name is Zach Ginn. I wholesale real estate. I've done over a thousand real estate wholesaling deals the past six years. So wholesale like 17. I'm 23 years, 23 years old right now. And I teach people how to get into wholesaling real estate for free. I never claim to make hundreds of millions of dollars a year in wholesaling. I make millions in my business wholesaling real estate. But uh, I can tell you straight up is I'm just a regular dude who got pretty decent at wholesaling. And I know how to make a, a lot of money and know how to help a lot of people make a lot of money in wholesaling. That is the point. That's what I want to share, and that is the point of this video. So without further ado, let's break it down. Let's get into it, and let's just really share my ultimate cold calling guide so you guys know how to get into cold calling. So uh, without further ado, let's kind of pop this thing up here and break it down. So today, I'm just going to break down my ultimate cold calling uh, live. So we're ready to go, and we're ready to share everything 
uh, today. So let's break it down. So what is cold calling? So this is the first thing we got to understand. Don't want to uh, confuse anybody too much on this, but let's just sort of break this down, right? What is cold calling, right? Like I always look at cold calling and always look at exactly how to simplify cold calling, right? That, that has always been the thing uh, that I think is going to be the best for everyone, right? So uh, what is cold calling, right? Cold calling is basically, when, when you look at it from a very, very basic perspective, is the art of reaching out and talking to homeowners for the purpose or to contact people who want to sell the property for cash. This is not closing sellers. Okay. I, I think a lot of people get very stressed out uh, when they hear the word cold calling. They think, oh my gosh, this means I have to go close a bunch of sellers and I can do all this crazy. No, this is not what cold calling is about. And this is not what we're teaching. And if you're cold calling today, that's actually not what you're doing. You are not closing anybody today. So I think a lot of people get really stressed out because they think, oh my gosh, I got to go close people right now. You're actually not closing people uh, in cold calling. And let me explain. It's strictly for finding people that want to sell the property. That is the point of wholesaling uh, when it comes to the marketing side. That is it. So let's just break down cold calling. Cold calling that I have found in my six years uh, of wholesaling real estate, it all comes down to really four steps. And you know, people sell five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollar courses to learn cold calling. And really, these gurus confuse you on purpose. But really, when you look at cold calling from a nitty gritty, gritty, gritty perspective, it comes down to four simple things. And let's break down these four simple things, okay? Step one, pulling a list. That, that is what the first step of cold calling is. Really not going to complicate it. I'm just going to give you the information right now. But that's step one, pulling a list. Step two, I've always said this, skip tracing the list. Skip tracing the list is finding somebody's phone number. Step three, calling the list, right? Cold calling the list. They don't know who you are. So technically it is a cold call. And then step four, you guessed it, putting the yeses in the CRM. Screenshot this. This really isn't as complicated as, as it seems, but really these are the four main steps. Uh, these are the four main things in wholesaling real estate that you got to understand. Uh, but really this is what cold calling is all about. Like this is literally $5,000 a month of information for cold calling mentorship. This is a thousand dollars of a little course right here. Just like, this is what it is. And this might not be what you want to hear. You might want to get this crazy 50 stepped prong type system. That's going to confuse you and all this stuff. This, this ain't it. All right. This, this ain't boys and gals. Okay. This is what it is. This is the truth. This is what wholesaling real estate is. And if this is not what you would like, it's okay. I don't want to confuse y'all on it. But this is what wholesaling real estate is, especially when it comes to cold calling. This is, you just got to simplify it, right? So step one, pulling a list. Step two, skip tracing said list. Step three, cold calling the list and putting the S's in the CRM. So if I can say this in one, one quick, like a minute, I'm going to find a list of somebody that wants to sell the property. I'm going to get the phone number. I'm going to see if they want to sell it by calling them. And if they say yes, I'm going to put them in the CRM. Boom, go to acquisitions, closing it, right? That is what cold calling is all about. Remember, in cold calling, the point, the singular goal in cold calling is to get a yes. You just want to find somebody that's interested in selling their property. That is wholesaling real estate, cold calling. Okay, that is what cold calling is. We are calling people on a list and seeing if they want to sell their house. If they want to sell their house, we might ask them a couple of questions, but it's not our job to close them. So many people think they have to close sellers on the first cold call. Now, for cold calling, it's a little for sale by owners. It's a little different, right? Because it's not as cold. Uh, but really, if I'm doing general cold calling, like for what mostly I teach and say, it's really not that. It's really not complicated. It's actually pretty simple. And this is why I can train people in the Philippines, in Mexico, uh, South America, Central America uh, to cold call for me because it's not that complicated. If you use a really simple script, it can go very, very well for you. And this is just a general life lesson I've learned for wholesaling for this business. But the more complicated you make wholesaling real estate, the less money you make. The more you simplify things, the more you keep it to a people's business, the more you're going to do well. And that is how I've been very successful, right? So what do we need to know before we start wholesaling? What do we need to know before we start cold calling, right? Like, 
So before we start wholesaling, you should know what the laws are and everything like that. That's why I tell everyone to go there for wholesaling.com. Once you get this going and you're ready to start cold calling, you come to me and like, Zach, I'm ready to cold call. I'm ready to go. What do you need to know before we start? Number one, this is a very important question. Most people can't answer this question. And that's just why they're failing in cold calling. Number one, you need to know what kind of leads you're going to pull and call. If you have no idea what kind of lead you're pulling and you, you're just trying to get into cold calling, you're doomed. Okay, you have to make a plan. Very important. Number two, how much time are you willing to call every single week? How much time are you planning? How much time are you out here actually dedicating to cold calling? You have to ask yourself this question. If you're not willing to dedicate a certain amount of time to cold calling, you probably need to switch up your list. Maybe you have to switch up your script. Maybe you have to switch some things up. I can help people with all types of time budgets and money budgets, but you got to ask yourself what it is because once you put pen to paper, write it down, make that commitment, you're more willing to actually keep going on the information and getting on the actions. Number three, what script are you using? Most of y'all already know what my script is, but I can tell you some people have personal flares they like to put in the script. That's okay. I don't really mind, uh, but figure out what script you're using. And then lastly, this is probably one of the most important ones. This is one that is never really talked about, right? I think I got one more after this, but uh, you have to know your objections and how to overcome them and what they are. And what I can tell you is if you don't know that, you will fail in this business. You, you will fail in cold calling straight up, honestly, and just wholesaling real estate in general. I always said this and I always say this every single time, and this is true. Wholesaling real estate, real estate investing is a fight. It, it is a literal fight. And no, it's not physical violence, which never good, right? But like, it is literally like a boxing match. If you know you're going to a boxing match, you probably know you're probably going to get punched. Someone's going to try to punch me if I'm boxing, right? It's just the name of the game, right? It's just, that's how it works. If I'm going into a fight, I'm probably going to get punched in the face. We don't like that fact. It's scary. But that's how it works, right? And there's plenty of people that go into boxing that are scared uh, before they get in the ring to get punched. And that's the, like people go into wholesaling. They know they're going to get punched, right? It's a fight. But here's the thing. If you don't know how to defend yourself in a boxing match, you're, you're, you're going to lose, okay? That's just how it works. So if I have my fist up right now and I'm boxing, I probably should know how to defend myself. So if I know if somebody is going to try to give me, like if someone's going to jab and they're going to swing, you're going to know how to defend yourself, okay? So if I know that someone's like this and somebody tries to jab me, I should know what to do. So if I just stand there and let somebody just beat on me, so if I know if someone's going to give me a right hook, okay, if somebody gives me a right hook, that's my objection. What do I do? Well, if someone's giving me a right hook, okay, if someone's giving me a hook, I know I can go back, okay? I can duck, I can block, right? And protect myself. Like I know how to defend myself from that move. So if someone's trying to jab me, I like to get out of the way. You, you can go there. You, there's some dodging, right? Little Floyd Mayweather action right there, you know, get some shuffling like uh, Muhammad Ali. But like you should know how to do it. And that sometimes you know how to <laughs> stop a hook. But if like a Francis Ngannou type guy is going to give you a hook, there's nothing much you can do. We all know this. But if you know how to generally defend yourself, you have a chance in the fight, right? And it's not as scary or stressful as being in a boxing match, okay? I promise you here. But you should know what to do if that ever happens. So if I know somebody's going to say, and here's the coolest part about wholesaling and boxing, right? Wholesaling objections are like that, that a really annoying kid. So let's say this kid says, okay, you know what? In the next 10 seconds, I'm going to punch you straight in your face. Okay, in 10 seconds, 10, 9, 8, and then you go to 1, and then he tries to hit you straight in the face with a jab. Guess what? If He, he just told me what he's going to do. Okay, if he's going to hit me straight up in the face, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get out of the way like this, okay? Or I'm just going to duck, or I'm going to do something, or just like get out of the way, right? This is how wholesaling cold calling goes with the objections. So I know if somebody asks me, hey, how much are you willing to offer me in the house? Oh, I know that objection. I have it written down right here. Okay, if somebody asks me how much I'm going to offer on their house, I can use the car analogy. Got it, right? Like you have a cheat sheet in front of you what to do. 
Okay, in boxing, you don't get that cheat sheet, right? You just see the hook coming, right? In, in wholesaling, you literally, you, have a, you could write down a cheat sheet of what to do. It's like cheating on a test. It's great. It's the best thing ever, right? And that is the point. That is what, so if you, do, but if you don't know how to overcome it, you're going to fail. And this is a massive issue I see. If you don't know what you're doing, you're going to fail here, okay? Next here, did you create an action plan? If you don't have any action, not going to do well. If you don't have a plan, you're not going to do well. So this is why the action plan combined is probably one of the most important things you can do. Okay. This is why it's super important wholesaling real estate that you can actually go out here and formulate a plan for your success. So many wholesalers out here, they don't know what they're doing when it comes to their action plan. And if you plan to actually make an action plan, you are probably not going to do well. When I survey very successful wholesalers in real estate wholesaling, they all have an action plan. They all do. They all create a plan. And I, guys, I am a broken record when I say this all the time. But if you look at the greatest men and women in history that you look up to as uh, a mentor, you look at them as just a great figure in history, they all had a stinking plan, okay? They, they all had a stinking plan. Every single one. The greatest military leaders, uh, the greatest uh, leaders just like in politics, uh, the, the greatest leaders uh, when it comes to like ancient times, right? They all had plans to do great things, right? And you got to think about that to, to an extent, right? Like you look at Gandhi. That boy Gandhi had a plan before he did a bunch of things, right? Einstein had a plan. These people, these men and women all had plans. And if you don't have a plan, you're not going to do very well, okay? And just, it's very stressful, I think, for a lot of people um, to go out here without a plan, right? So one person I always love talking about is Kobe Bryant. I love Kobe Bryant. Uh, rest in peace. But Kobe Bryant had a plan for basically everything he did when it came to his achievements in life, right? That, that guy's a winner. Always had a plan. Like if you don't have a plan, you're not going to do well, right? You look at um, you look at some other great people in history. You know, I, I like looking at Winston Churchill a lot because um, he had some very dark days and he had a plan to get get victory, right? And things aren't as dire as it is back then, right? Until now, but you have to have a plan, right? Mark Cuban had a plan. Uh, Bezos uh, had a plan. All the great entrepreneurs had a plan. The greatest real estate—they all got plans. So if you think you are smarter than all those people, then sure. If, if you really think you're better than Kobe Bryant, then go out here without a plan. If you don't think you're better than Kobe, get a plan. And I don't think I'm better than Kobe. Okay, so I'm going to make a stinking plan. And that has been one thing that's given me a lot of success. So what are the best leads to cold call, right? I said, hey, know what type of leads to pull. I ain't no guru. I ain't going to leave you out, you know, out here in, in the dust so you can't do anything right. I'm going to give you exactly what you got to do. So let's break this down. The best leads to cold call, right? Number one, the government lists. I cannot say this enough. For most people starting out, when you got no money, you're probably got to do some government lists for wholesaling. Government lists are absolutely essential for your success. And for most beginner wholesalers, you have to be cold calling the government list when you got no money, right? So the next one here is, we'll break down the government list on the next slide. Uh, yeah, I wrote down the next one. So Number two, the vacant list, right? Get it from listrei.com. Get it from zackdata.com. I tell you guys straight up, when it comes to vacant lists uh, for wholesaling real estate, they're great because the property is just sitting there and there's a high motivation of wanting to sell the property. And yes, we love our drawing for dollars out here, but you can't put a sticky note uh, on those properties because they're vacant. So they're less willing to actually want to get rid of the prop. They're less willing to go like door knocking or sticking it on there. So that's why it works very well. Number three here is the high equity. Uh, get it from freehosting.com filters. We got the filters on there. That's a great list. A little bigger list, uh, but it's definitely a really good one here. Drawing for dollars, just y'all know I've been screaming about drawing for dollars forever. Uh, but like if you get have conversations with people that literally go out here and just have ugly looking properties, you're going to do fine. That is the point, right? Tired landlords, guys, if you have a tenant and you want to get just get rid of them and we just give you a call, it's really good, right? Tire landlords, get that from listrari.com or zackdata.com. Amazing list. Zillow for sale by owners. That's the last one. I could tell you straight up, guys and gals, the Zillow for sale by owners is probably not the, you know, it's not the tippy tippy top tier list of cold call, but it's great practice. And I think for a lot of people scared of cold call, it is a list you probably should be pulling. And I'm, I'm just being honest with you. Uh, if you are just scared to death to go out here and start cold calling sellers, try the Zillow for sale by owners. I, I think you do very well. 
And then let's talk about the government list. All right, so these are the government lists I pulled because there's a lot of them. Uh, so let's write these down. Remember, at freelancing.com, bottom right-hand corner there. Uh, that's really when you break these down. So what are the top government lists for you to be pulling? Number one is going to be the code violations. Remember, you get this from the Code Enforcement Department. Number two, the probates, people that unfortunately pass away. We talked about errors. Talk to the probates, guys. Absolutely amazing. Number three, the tax, credit, card, and IRS debt lien lists. You get these actually from the local county's clerk of the court website. Absolutely amazing. People behind their taxes, credit cards, and on their taxes and on their IRS federal taxes. Great list. Four here's the water shutoff list. If water ain't running in the house, I tell you guys, you do not want to be dealing with that property. You don't want to be living in it. And there's a lot of motivation to want to sell the property there, right? Fire damage properties, properties that went on fire. Guys, it is a great list. I'm telling you, you should be pulling that. But really, you pull these leads and the point here is you have an action plan, right? You just need to take that action, right? So what is an action plan? An action plan is just your plan of attack to become successful in wholesaling real estate. This is where most wholesalers don't have a plan. And when you don't have a plan, you're going to fail. All right. So how to create an action plan, right? It comes down to two basic steps, right? Number one, creating a time budget. And then number two, creating a money budget. So what is a time budget? A time budget is basically a budget of the time. So like I kind of said before in the beginning, how many hours are you willing to take to become successful in cold calling, right? How many hours are you willing to give every single week to your marketing? Oh, I can do two hours a day, five days a week. So that is 10 hours, right? Pretty simple. I, I can give 10 hours to cold calling. That's fine, right? Maybe two or three hours for list pulling, skip tracing, 15 hours. That's fine, right? I can do this for drawing for dollars, this for this, right? Perfect, right? Two is a money budget. How much money can I spend? I can tell you, I would probably say I'd rather you have a bigger time budget than having a bigger money budget because time is more important than money. And I can tell you is somebody out here with no money that can dedicate 25 hours to cold calling will do better than the person that has a thousand bucks that can only dedicate three hours to cold calling. Okay. There's just time is way more important starting out than the money because the money is just a tool and the time you just get better skills when it comes to talking to sellers and cold calling. So it is more important, but it's important to have both. And if you have a lot of time and some money to spend, it's a great, it's a great one. Right. And I want to tell everybody this, this is uh, very contrary to most gurus tell you, but it's the truth. And I'm saying this and you don't need no money for this, but this is the truth. You need a dialer. Everybody watching this needs a dialer. You don't need to pay for a dialer, but you need a dialer, right? So you must use a dialer. If you're not using a dialer and using a personal cell, that is not good for cold calling. You got to separate it, right? And that's because a lot of virtual wholesalers are doing this and it's just not looking good, right? So if you need a free dialer, just go to Google Voice. Uh, Google Voice is a free, basically a free dialer, more or less, where you can get any area code, you get professional voicemail, all of these things. It's great. Just go to Google Voice and it'll basically share with you exactly uh, in freehosting.com how to use it. Google Voice is absolutely amazing. And then use like a pay dollar dialer, right? Like you can do zackdialer.com if you're doing some more dialing, but you don't really have to use that like as a beginner. Like I don't think you really even need that. So let's break down the steps, right? So we talked about step one, pulling your list. If you want to know how exactly how to pull each of these lists individually, just go to freelancing.com. They're all individually done like an hour each. Hey, this is Zach. How to pull the code violations. How to do this. And I do it live. I show you replays of me pulling the list, right? How to do them online. If you're virtual, in person, all these things. It's really not that complicated. Like I'll tell you, for example, I didn't know how to use Podio at all starting out. But I started some. I started to watch some YouTube tutorials on it, and then it was like second nature for me, right? So the same thing is going to be like for you guys. So if you don't know how to pull the probate list, I have a, I have some videos where I'm literally I just go behind the computer and I just pull the probates up and I show you how to do it, right? Like that's how I learn. I don't know kids these days, right? But like that's why I learn a lot, and I think that's going to help you guys uh, a lot too, right? And it's all most of these lists that they're government. They're going to be free, so pretty cool. Number two, skip trace the list, get their phone number right. So how do you find free skip tracing, right? So free skip tracing basically comes from uh, three distinct categories, right? TruePeopleSearch.com is going to be the top way to find somebody's phone number absolutely for free. Number two is going to be the white pages. And number three is going to be from DMing and direct messaging your sellers. If you know how to do TruePeopleSearch.com, white pages, DMing your sellers, just you know, go to Facebook, say, hey, 
I have a quick question about your property. Can I get a call or can I talk to you about it? If you can't find anybody's phone number, it's going to be absolutely amazing, right? I think so many wholesalers out here get very confused on it, but like that's really what you got to do. Now you got paid skip, tra paid skip tracing, right, guys? So there's two ways to do paid skip tracing, right? You use listra.com at about 12 cents. A record, you use zackdata.com, 13, 15 cents, right? Um, you get the bigger ones, you get up to like 10 cents, uh, kind of the plan that I got on batch, but you just whatever one you want. But that's for people that don't want to use the free skip tracing, right? And number three, here's the important one. This is the, this is the money. This is the money step. This is when we start making money, okay? This is when you start getting that cash, all right? So let's talk about cold calling your list, all right? Let, let's give me the scripts. Let me get a million dollar shebang. This is the whole enchilada. Let's break it down, okay? And you can screenshot this stuff I teach at freeolson.com. This is what it is. So let's break this down. This is my million dollar cold calling script. All right. This is a script that makes me millions of dollars every single year. Now, if you don't want to use it, that's fine. But I can tell you is this script probably produces, I would say a million dollars a month from all of people following me using the script. And that's very, I know it's in the seven figures. I don't think it's going to be eight figures every single month just from cold calling because if everyone uses other strategies that I do, but I would say all of my followers on the YouTube channels, Facebook group, uh, Instagram, all these people, right? I have almost a million followers like combined on all these people. Like if all these people are using the scripts and from the checks I see, it's producing millions every single month of just people using the script. Millions a year for me, my personal business with the script, uh, not a million a month on there. Uh, working on it, right? Just working on it. But a uh, million dollars uh, every single month from just my followers using the script. So I can tell you straight up before I give it to you, I want y'all to understand this. If most of the followers, if my followers watching me and getting my information are making millions of dollars every single month with this simple script, unless you are making millions of dollars every single month in your cold calling, you should probably use this script. Now, hey, prove me wrong, but most people that are using their own specific script and it's not working well it's because it's probably too complicated, you're not getting to the point. You're wasting time and you got the wrong calling and the wrong tonality, right? Like you're, you're probably just calling the wrong way. So I'm saying this humbly, unless you are making hundreds of thousands of dollars every single month in cold calling, I would use the script until you do, then develop your own stinking script, okay? What I can tell you is once you actually act like a human being, you actually become very successful at cold calling. This is a very shocking statement. This is a very surprising thing, right? Because you're listening to your guru, right? That ain't what, it, that ain't what it's about, all right? So let's break it down. Let's break down my million dollar cold calling script, okay? Y'all spend thousands of dollars in my guru mastermind today to, to watch this. So let's break it down. Number one, this is ring, ring, ring. This is shocking, but you just asked him this question. Is this the owner of 123 Main Street? Why am I asking such a stupid, stupid, simple question? The reason why I asked this stinking, stupid, simple, simple question is because it throws you off. Psychologically, it will throw you off. Because you got to remember how most people answer phones. Okay. Oh, I'm getting a phone call. Unknown oh, number. I don't know this number. I'm sketched out. Hello? Right? Like that's how they answer it. And so if you say, this is Zach from Zach Home Solutions. And that could have been a deal. But I sound like a stupid scam caller, right? I'm, I'm going to go watch my Bachelor in Paradise uh, TV show on the couch, right? Like that, that, that's what most people are, right? That, that's how they are. Most people, when they answer the cold call, they want to find a reason to get off the phone as soon as possible. They don't want to deal with you, okay? They're enjoying their lives right now. Most of these people are on TikTok. They're, they're, they're like stuck at like, they, they want to get their dopamine hit from whatever they're doing, right? TV shows, uh, social media, like whatever. Even reading a book, relaxing, right? Like they're doing something chill. Like they don't want to be talking about real estate right now. They don't. Shocking you, but it's true. So you got to give them a reason to stay on the stinking phone. So if I, if I say, this is Zach Zach Home Solutions, eh, no, back to my show, right? Like that's what most people are going to do. So how do I use the ninja sales tactic here, right? You're just going to ask them, hey, is this the owner of 123 Main Street? It's going to be shocking. Wait, yes, th this is him. What do you want? Now you got them engaged. Now they're not no, 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 no mode, right? Because most cold calls go, 
most cold calls go, first of all, they're like, are you looking to sell your house? No. They just want to get off the phone. They, they just want to get off that sinking phone. Are you interested in buying solar? No. Right? Like most people automatically, they're no, 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 no mode. So guess what? Let's put them in a yes mode. So they're ready to say no. This is why my initial script doesn't say, hey, you're looking to sell your house? No. Right? They don't want to think about it. Right? But if you put them in yes mode, they are way more likely, 60, 70, 80% more likely to say yes after you ask them this question. I don't really reveal this too much about the script because I just want to make it really simple, but it's very it's actually a very complicated script that took me years. It's psychologically proven to get more yeses. Math, science, I've used a lot of scripts, guys and gals. This is the script that I give you. This is my greatest gift I could probably give to people on scripts because this is a gift that I personally use in my business and it makes people a lot of money. Now that they said yes to the owner, they're interested. Maybe they pause their TV show. Maybe they're off of TikTok right now. Maybe they're off of whatever they're using to distract them. And now they're completely engaged on the next question because it's like, who is this person? Is this a police officer? Is this the FBI? Is this an ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend? Like, who are these people, right? Like, is this a family member calling from jail? Like, who wh is this a doctor giving me a diagnosis? Like, what's going on? How does this person know where I live? You really got their full attention by just asking that super, super simple question. And that is why you ask that question first. No guru says this. No guru will ever give you this stuff because this is th these gurus are they're so broke that they don't even know how the stuff works. They don't know how the psychological works and they don't want to close sellers. So now you broke that down. You broke their concentration. Now you ask them the next question. And this is super simple. Hey, this is Zach. I had a quick question. Dot, dot, dot. Oh my gosh. What is the question? Are you interested in selling that property? <laughs> that is it. Because now they are more open and more willing to take a suggestion of them actually looking to sell the property. We give a little curiosity in there, right? We get a little interesting on there and then boom, we hit them with it. I can tell you, you will quadruple your results by asking that and saying, hey, are you looking to sell your property? Are you interested in selling your property? Because you're no, 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 no. Psychologically, once you can open somebody's mindset, they're more willing to sell, right? They're more willing to sell the property. I can tell you, a lot of psychological sales books in, the, in this. And this is just a, this is kind of for show. If I could show you my actual uh, book collection, it'd be a lot nicer, a lot bigger. But what I could tell you is I've made millions of dollars in this business. And what I could tell you is what, the power of opening somebody's mind uh, and suggestive thinking will change a lot. And you're not convincing somebody to like, you're not, but you just want to get people off that no, 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 no mentality, right? Because from when I started wholesaling six years ago to now, people are a lot more just in that no, no mentality. They're a lot more into their, I don't know. I don't know how to say this the right way, but like in their social medias into whatever they're doing to relax or like they're not working. They're looking to re relax, chill out. They're not in that like engaged state to have an actual conversation most of the time. Right. You got to get them out of that mode. Right. And this is why it's super, super important to ask it this way. And I want everybody to understand that that's my million dollar cold calling script. I know it seems simple. I think most people are like, I'm, I'm better than that. You're not. All right. I'm not better than the script. Okay. And this is the script that I've developed. Me and Rick, it's taken us a very long time, but Hey, this is the owner of one, two, three main street. Hey, this is Zach. So you're introducing who you are to build a little bit of trust. I had a quick question. Are you interested in selling that property? Let's say it one more time together. Okay. Let, let's say it one more time together, all together. Is this the owner of 123 Main Street? Hey, this is Zach. I had a quick question. Are you interested in selling that property? That's it. Okay. Because once you ask that question, it's going to be a yes or no, right? And most of them are going to be no's. Just letting everybody know. Most of it's going to be a no. That's okay. Because you're most likely, more likely to get that yes. So this is the script screenshot it, do whatever you want with it. But I'm telling you, this will make you millions of dollars if you know how to effectively use it. It is a tool. Like I've said before, what is it worth to you? What is the script worth? 
It's like asking what a baseball bat is worth to a criminal. Not good. Or what is a baseball worth to Aaron Judge, right? Aaron Judge with a baseball can make millions of dollars. What can Zach Ginn do with a baseball bat? Not much. Swing and miss, probably. Just, just being honest. I'm not that good at baseball. I was pretty, I was pretty good at t-ball, but not baseball, right? Same thing with the ba- like same thing with basketball, right? What can LeBron James do with a basketball? He could probably make millions of dollars with a basketball. Oh, he will. What can I do with a basketball? Lose and pick up, right? Like that. That's what I am. Okay, but you got to think about like this script in the right hands is super powerful. In the wrong hands of somebody that's not willing to use the script, not willing to get the right list, they'll 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 fumble it. Right? They'll fumble it. They'll do terrible. But. If you are actually out here and you know how to use, you have a good script and you can use that tool successfully, you'll do very well. And this is something you guys have to understand uh, about cold calling, about real estate, about wholesaling, right? It's all about the tools and how you use them. Because I just gave you the most powerful tool of all, which is the script. But if you don't use the script wisely, you're going to fail. You're 100% probably going to fail, okay? So you got to know what to do. So here it is. Screenshot it. Go to fearlessly.com, get it. I'm going to give you a couple seconds. I'm going to go in the next part here. But slay everybody, kind of, all right, y'all screenshot it. All right. So let's break down the punches, right? Now people start punching you, right? Now you ask that question. The punches start flying. Ding, ding, right? The ding, ding hopped on. Oh, snap. Now some of these people will start punching you, right? With words, right? Like no physical violence here, right? But like, oh no, what do we do? So let's break down some of those common punches, the most common attacks, uh, the most common objections you're going to get and how to defend them. All right. So let's, let's break down how to do this. Okay. So number one, I would sell my house, but where would I go? I will tell you that is probably the objection that just gets under my skin. And I don't know why, but I just think I get so mad as a beginner when I got asked this question, because I'm like, why would he even ask me that? Just say no. So there's actually a very easy way to get over this objection. Mr. Seller, when we buy a property from somebody, we usually give them the cash. So you will get cash. Most people, when we buy their house, they use that money and buy another house. So that's where they would go. You can go wherever you want. You can go to Mississippi, you go to Alabama, you go to New York, right? So where would you do? Most people have a plan when they sell a house. Millions of people sell their house every single day. And when they sell it, they usually move to another spot. You can rent a property out. You can buy a property. There's a million things you can do. You're going to have the money when we buy it because we pay all cash. Like what else? is People that would need to sell their property, they have a plan. Okay. Like I've sold houses I've lived in before. I've bought properties that I live in, right? Like when I sell a house, I usually go to another one, right? It just, it's really not that complicated. And you got to make it really simple because that is kind of a smart Alec question. That is a, uh, that most likely that's not something that wants to sell the property. I, I don't really, I don't even know. I might have to go through my data logs of VAs. I don't think I've ever closed a seller that asked me that in the beginning and I closed like a deal off of that. But you could go over it, right? Now, this objection, this is an objection I actually get a lot uh, with cold calling, and this is actually a pretty easy one to get over, right? So who is this, and what do you want? So hey, Miss Shelley, looking to sell the property. Who is this? What What do you want? Right? Hey, this is Zach. Me and my partner are looking to buy a couple more properties in the area for cash. Are you looking to sell your property? That's it. So let's do it one more time. Hey, Mr. Seller, you're looking to sell the property. Who is this? What do you want? Ah, right? And they go very aggressive when they do this. Hey, Mr. Seller, my name is Zach Ginn. Me and my partner, Jeff, are looking to buy a couple more properties in the Hilton Head, South Carolina area, right? And we're looking to buy about two or three more this month. Are you looking to sell your property? That's pretty much it, right? I'm telling everybody straight up in wholesaling real estate, right? If you go actually out here, and start co- having conversations with the sellers. You're going to get objections, but you know to answer these objections the right way, you're going to do very, very well, right? So uh, yeah, that's probably one of the most common uh, objections I get on that end, right? 
Uh, this is a great one. You know, how much are you offering the house? And it's usually never like that. It's usually a lot more aggressive. So what do I mean by that? Hey, this is Zach. I had a quick question. Are you looking to sell the property? Are you interested in selling the property? Huh? What? How much are you offering for the house? Huh? What's your offer? What's your offer? What's your offer? They literally do not stop. And I can tell you the people in the comments, they know what I'm talking about. The real I do some cold calling. Some aggressive people out here. And I uh, don't want to make fun of my New Yorkers, but I'm in Florida. The people that are like this are people from New York. Prefer pretty much Queens and the Bronx. Brooklyn people don't do that. Uh, Long Island people are some Long Island people, but, but if you're from the Bronx or Queens, you're screaming my head off of how much are you offering for the house like 50 times. Okay. Love Queens. Love the Bronx. I've been there. I love that place. Love the people. But holy moly, when they move to Florida, they are insanely aggressive. Okay. But what I can tell you is Jersey people too, a little bit, but Jersey people a little more standoffish, but so how much are you offering? Hey, Mr. Seller, I would love to give you an offer on the property, but before I give you an offer, can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. What, what is that? What is that? Huh? What's your offer? Have you ever bought a car? Yes. I bought a car before. Well, when you bought the car, did you test drive it? Of course I test drove that car. Well, I sort of have to do that. I sort of have to do that with real estate. So if I buy a car, I'm gonna have to test drive it. Right? So why would I give you an offer on a house when I haven't actually haven't seen it, right? Because maybe the house has termites. Maybe the house has a lot of issues. I don't know. Maybe the house is even more perfect. I give you a better offer. But me just saying an offer straight up out here, is it's not going to be legitimate. And really, when I give offers, I'm completely 100% have my word as a man uh, when it comes out here giving this offer. And I can't give you my full word on an offer just over the phone. I, I kind of, you know, I can say a little more on that. But like, that's it, right? And Hey, as my word as a woman, like whatever way you want to do it, if, if you're a female, right. But like, I like to say that too, with a lot of people, Hey, I have my word as a man and I stick to my word and I can't give you my word on an offer if I haven't seen it. Right. So shout out to my people from Queens and the Bronx. They're also a lot on their word too. Uh, a lot of Jersey people like that. My word is everything. Right. And you sort of say that to a New Yorker and they're like, yeah, right. And they're like, yeah, because they're very big on their word, right? Uh, loyalty, all that stuff, right? And so you kind of switch off their aggressiveness back on them, right? Uh, you you kind of flip it back on them and it, it works really well, right? So it's pretty good. So th that is what uh, that objection is kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, next tier. How much are you offering? And then really, that's pretty much it, you know. Um, but one thing I could tell you, so if they say yes, ask them these four questions. Okay. So if you're asking them, Hey, you're looking to sell the property. Yes, I actually am looking to sell my property. Here's the script after, right? Because most people like <laughs> I, this actually happened to me. Okay. I'm going to be straight up to you. Okay. My first, my, my, I think my second or third cold call ever. All right. Uh, cold call. Oh, I'm not looking to sell. I'm not looking to sell. And then like the third one, I was like, Hey, you looking? So he said, yes. I was like, what? Huh? You're looking to sell? Yeah, I'm looking to sell my house. Oh, okay. And then I looked at my script. I'm like, I I, I didn't even plan this far. <laughs> I, I just, I kind of use it like bandit signs. I went from the MCT bit, MCTP there, but I was like, oh my gosh, I got a yes. And some of you guys are like, you get like 50 no's and you got to get a yes. You're like, wait, you're looking to sell? Huh? Huh? Right? <laughs> and it's kind of funny, but like it, it happens for a lot of people, right? So when they say, hey, I'm looking to sell, just think of MCTP. So if they say they're looking to sell the property, you got to ask them these four questions. M, motivation for M, C, condition, T, time frame, and P, price. So let's get into how to say these right way, right? Motivation, keep it really simple, y'all. Hey, why are you looking to sell the property? Number two, condition. Can you tell me a little about the property? Is there a, does it need any repairs? How's the roof? How's the AC? Things like that, right? Number three, time frame. When are you looking to sell the property? You're looking to sell the property in a week, a month, a year. Like when are you looking to sell the house? Lastly is price. What price are you looking to sell the property for? So what price works for you? What ballpark figure works, right? And then really ideally the perfect time frame, right? That's pretty much it, right? I think so many people out here really complicate this. Keep it to MCTP, freehosting.com. That's what we break down, right? Now, I want you to say, if you ask these questions, you build some rapport. Remember, guys, you are not closing the seller. 
you're just getting off the phone and then you get some more information and then you can close them from there. Most people aren't willing to go close a property the first call. So don't give them that offer first, right? So step four, put the lead in the CRM. So basically tell the seller, you will look up the property, talk, talk it over with your partner, and then you'll give them a call back tomorrow. And really, you can't gather the ARVs that quick over the phone, like a minute, right? Uh, maybe two or three minutes if you do it really, really fast, which you can do with like a FISBO. But like, you want to get the information right. And you call them back. You want to set the appointment right. That is the point here, guys. You want to get all the decision makers on the phone. When you're cold calling, you don't, have, you don't have the big advantage there, right? Like, you think of Star Wars, you don't have the high ground. And everybody knows if you have the high ground, you have the advantage. And cold calling, you're not on the high ground. It's, it's like flatlands, right? So you don't want to be dealing with that, right? So just understand that. Put in your CRM, you'll be good to go. Now, I want to break down this really important point here. But what separates a good and a bad cold caller? Very, very easy. This is a very simple one. Confidence. Okay, guys and gals, a good cold caller has confidence. A bad cold caller does not. Confidence is in the belief of what you say. How do you gain confidence, right? Gain confidence. You can basically get confidence from experience and reps. Knowing your objections, because a lot of people aren't confident when they when they get an objection, oh my gosh, they freeze up. They get freaked out. Knowing your objection is going to be very important. Having a cash buyer on deck is very important too. If you have a cash buyer on deck, you might be a little more confident that you and your partner can buy it because you actually have a cash partner already looking to buy it, right? Uh, knowing the scripts too, but I, I think the script's pretty simple. And then from there, belief in your ability to buy the house with the cash buyer. Remember, guys, what I said before, what is confidence? Confidence is a belief of what you say, the words you say, and the action you take. I kind of said this on Sunday on my personal channel when I was talking, but I can tell everybody watching this, okay? When you talk to a motivated seller, you are not an expert on real estate. You're an expert in helping people out. You're an expert on giving cash offers. So if somebody has a question about this crazy repair on a spigot on the side of the house and you don't know plumbing or like outdoor plumbing at all, hey, I'll talk to my handyman or a plumber on this. I'm not too sure. I know this has to be fixed, but I don't know the exact cost or price of it. That's fine, right? So if you buy somebody's car, like you don't be an expert on cars, but you obviously a process of talking to somebody that's looking to sell their car, right? That's how you do it. Guys, today is the time. Right now is the time. This is the perfect time. To take action. This is the perfect time to change your life. If you do not want to change your life, that's fine. I'm not here to help the people that don't want to be helped. I can tell you is I just gave you all the tools for success. The question is, are you willing to take the tools and become successful with it? Or are you willing not to, right? Like I can't make you become successful in wholesaling real estate. I, I cannot give you your first deal. I can't do those things. I can't. What I can do is give you everything you need to know to become successful, all right? If you're not willing to become successful, that, that's on, honestly up, up to you. I have given you the information. Um, you, you sort of look at how the world worked in the med medieval times. Uh, you look at the Dark Ages, right? Why is it called the Dark Ages? Uh, the Dark Ages were called the Dark Ages for like three, four, even 600 years. There was no significant technological improvement, improvements for like 500, 600 years in human history called the dark ages, right? In Europe. The reason why is because nobody could advance in society. No, nobody on the bottom could become rich because the information was shielded behind uh, the, the Lords and the church, right? Like back then, right? This is not talking about religion now, but like that's how nothing really advanced in the world. No one was able to make a ton of money. What happened? We had the Renaissance and then the information, the printing press, the information was widespread and people, you know, all that great stuff. Here's the cool part. Wholesaling real estate was in a dark age, okay? The information was hidden behind the courses and the people that were 16, 17, 18 years old, right? Uh, the single dads, the single moms, the people that couldn't afford to pay the courses, they were stuck in the dark ages. They're in feudalism, right? The lords, the the the... Uh, the gurus up top in their castles wouldn't let anyone do it unless they paid their money, right? Well, guess what? We are in a renaissance right now in wholesaling. We are in the wholesaling renaissance where the information is free. The printing press is here. I'm giving you everything you need to know. Some people, when information like this and a great opportunity presents themselves like this, they decide they don't want to deal with it. They, they, don't, want to, they don't want the information. They, they want to go back to the feudalism society 
And the other people decide to make change in the entire world. You have to ask yourself which one you're willing to do. You have all the tools to become successful. All the tools. I interview people monthly, uh, on a monthly basis that have no money, no cash. They're able to change their life in wholesaling real estate, right? Uh, it's ultimately up to you. And if all those people can do it, you can stink and do it too, okay? And I know a lot of people deal with difficult situations and I completely understand. I, I have empathy for it, right? I, I, I've, um, I care. But the thing is, there's always somebody worse off than you that overco- overcame those struggles and became successful. People that had to deal with way worse things than I ever had to deal with starting out that became successful. And for most people watching this, yes. Okay, so if you can do it, if they can do it, you can do it too. So we are in the renaissance of wholesaling. The information is not guarded anymore. Uh, the information is completely free for everyone. And let's get successful for it, right? But that is the point. That is what I want to share today. And that is it. So that is cold calling 101 for wholesaling real estate. That is how you become successful with the power of cold calling. This is how you change your life with the power of cold calling. So what I want to do right now is really break down some questions you guys have. Uh, we have a QA. and uh, We are doing, this is a live stream, right? So let's flex on the guru that I'm live and break it all down. So let's answer this. Qu- uh, let's answer some really uh, good questions we got and uh, let's break it. All right. Now is the time. Facts. Everybody knows that. It's facts. We know what to do, right? So let's answer a couple important questions. Remember here on the bottom here, freewholesaling.com. That is my free real estate wholesaling course where I teach wholesaling real estate absolutely for free. Hop on there and learn how to pull this and be very successful, right? So let's break this down. So Anthony has a great question. How do you deal with the DNC list? Okay. I'll tell you this straight up. DNC is a weird one because you look at the DNC laws, you look how sort of the DNC list sort of works. It's kind of weird. Uh, I'll tell you this for a lot of people. Technically, the DNC list, you're not selling a product. You're not selling a service. Um, you're not, no one has to give money for what you're calling. And so you look at the FCC guidelines on co calling, uh, on what telemarketing is. Technically, what we do is, it's in a gray area. It's not against the law. And I have not seen one person getting sued or got a fine from the FCC for a DNC list due to wholesaling real estate specifically, right? The only people I know in the real estate investing industry that has ever been fined from the FCC, uh, no, actually from the FCC was for RVMs. And that was the Southern District of Florida for ringless voicemails. So I don't talk about ringless voicemails. That's the only instance I've seen it. And that was not from individual, that was a huge cold calling company, like huge. Okay, that was just big time, right? The only other thing I've also seen is I've seen the Federal Trade Commission go after real estate investing, like like a huge multi-billion dollar corporations uh, for lying to sellers. I've seen that, but that's pretty much it. So like, I think Open Door or Open something, I don't know what they're called. Um, I think it's Open Door. They got fined $60 million for telling sellers that they'd make more money with them versus a realtor, which is complete horse poop. You're probably gonna make more money listing over the realtor, but that's like, you got to let your sellers know that. And if they're willing to go with you just for the speed and convenience of cash, I think you're good to go. So yeah, I'm not worried about the DNC, but ultimately I'm not a lawyer. So reach uh, legal advice. So uh, break it down. Montana says, <laughs> yeah, uh, guys, this is from uh, Naruto. So uh, I, I think it's pretty cool. Rick is not, okay. Okay. He is not, uh, he is not a, uh, he's not the, uh, he's not Sasuke's brother. Okay. He, he's not a meanie. All right. We're, 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 we're not the bad guys in wholesome. All right. But uh, I just think, uh, I think it's cool design. I think it looks cool. Get that little Ochia thing going, but uh, probably the good guys, all right. <laughs> I'll be here, uh, I'll teach you the cold calling jutsu. <laughs> uh, Corey, what is up for those that have question of cold calling actually works? I currently have $35,000 uh, worth of assignments waiting to close from cold calling deals. Gotta start dialing. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you guys, like it works. Corey's doing really well with it, so if it's working for him, it's working for a lot of people. It works really well. 
Let's see here. Um, Steve says, what are your thoughts on assigning to home investors? I've assigned to home investors. It depends on the guy, individual guy or gal that owns it. But yeah, not bad. Let's see here. Sherry says, how do you handle rejection to your max allowable offer? If they don't want to sell for a discount, then it's not a good deal. Like I just, I've never seen a problem with that, right? So if somebody's not willing to go with your price, you got to let it go, right? Like that's pretty much like it's negotiation. If they're above your MAO, that's your max. You can't go above it, right? I think a lot of people have a misnomer that we have to convince somebody to go out here and sell the property to you. You're not convincing somebody. You give an offer and that's where it's at. Like they can decide not to. It's not the end of the world. Uh, Tara says, where's your flag? That's a Liberia. That's the flag of Liberia. Liberia. That's not even an American flag, but all right. Don't get confused with that guys. That, that's, that's a country in West Africa. Okay. That, that, that's not the American flag. That, that's a different flag, but uh, Liberia has got a history. Uh, their capital is Monrovia, but I'm not getting geography today, but your capital is actually named after a, a U.S. president, which is funny, but uh, flag is at my house. So I have two studios. So we got studio for flip with Rick, which I'm at now. It's got the nice microphone, got the nice movie camera stuff. And then we got my house, uh, which has my flag and my little setup there. So this is flip with Rick studio. And uh, yeah, pretty simple. Smash that like button y'all. So let's do some one-on-one -on -one calls. Let me see if I can uh, help some people out, learn cold calling, learn wholesaling real estate and see what I can do. If you want to learn how to actually talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, learn you know, how to get these one-on-one -on -one calls. You do it for free. Just go to Wholesaling Houses for Real. That's my Facebook group. Wholesaling Houses for Stinking Real. Go here. Two hours ago, I clicked the link here. Join here on the stream yard. Here's the YouTube. That's how you join on here. But I want to let everybody know, okay? This is very important. This is a very important announcement. I'm having a Black Friday sale for wholesaling real estate. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Once in a lifetime, my wholesaling course will be 50% off for the first hundred people today. It is usually a hundred, it's usually zero dollars. So usually I charge a hundred dollars. Sorry, usually I charge zero dollars. I don't know why I'm saying a hundred. Usually I charge nothing for the course, but for the low price of zero dollars, which is 50% off of zero, I did the math. You will get lifetime access to freehosting.com for 50% off. You can clap. Keep your applauses. I am doing this once in a lifetime sale. This is a one-time thing. I am never going to do a sale like this ever again this cheap. Okay? It's usually zero bucks. But for a limited time offer, you have to click on freehosting.com. That is the link. You only have 10 days. And this offer is gone. I'm, I'll charge you full price, $0 for the course. It, after 10 days, it's going to be $0. But for now, it is going to be 50% off. So I see everybody doing the Black Friday sales. I decided I want to do a Black Friday sale. Somebody told me that if I do a Black Friday sale, more people are going to sign up because it's the end of the year. So I said, heck, let me break down my price of my course by 50% so everybody signs up. It's at freehosting.com. Make sure y'all go there and join for 50% off. It's not going to be like this. I might even have a Christmas sale where I'm going to do 80% off, but only for a limited time offer. I'll put on a discovery call and we can join. I can't do that stuff with a straight face, but yeah, that's how you do it guys. That is freeholston.com. Put the link on there, but uh, yeah, it, it's, it's free. All right. It's, it's free. Steal my deal. I'm giving it away. <laughs> Ravon. Oh, can you hear me? What's up? So, sub, uh, sub, uh, sub Zach, uh, I had a few questions. So, some questions I had is when I go up prop steam, right? I do like Wayne County for my, or Detroit in general for vacant houses. Majority of the list I pull, they're all, they're like owned by realtor groups, right? So, like John C. Realtor Group, Mary G. Realtor Groups, 
And so the reason I found that out is because when I searched the property up on Google, the first thing that pops up is Zillow. And when I click on Zillow, it shows that it's owned by a realtor group. So I was like wondering how should I approach them? Like, should I tell them I'm a cash buyer or a wholesaler? Or should I tell them, hey, can I get in contact with the owners? Like, how should I approach you know, the Realty group or realtor group? Like investing? Realtor, group? realtor. So just They're a like group of realtors realtor. own a property? Yeah. So like they have like John C. A realtor group. So it's like a realtor group, but it's own, but it's like a realtor doing the whole thing. Call the realtor. So I tell them a cash bar or a wholesaler. So they, this is on them. You're trying to buy their property, right? Yeah. Well, I just call them up, see if they want to sell it. Right. But most realtors are going to list it. So I'd probably avoid it, but that's just what I think. So like, should I, so I'm confused. Should I say like, I'm a cash buyer then, or. Are you a cash buyer? No, I'm a wholesaler. So, so why would you lie? Okay. And like, they have like saying that they're like 3% off their commission and all like with the same, with it, it would be like, on same, the market. No, no. They said like, uh, if you gonna agree to go with them, like if you agree to go with the realtor, they want 3% off your check. So like, suppose this house is selling for like 50 K. And like, it's not listed. How's this? How is it three percent? No, no, no. I'm just saying on Zillow. Like when I go on the address and all, yeah. He says, call this number. I call him up, and he said, "Okay, yeah, cool. You're interested in buying this property? Cool." And he said, also said you want three percent off the money. So when you call the realtor up, yeah. Is that okay. normal? Like, did the realtor have to take a fee? All right. Sure, because you're not bringing a buyer's agent, I guess. Okay. So, all right, then. Okay. So it's normal. So like if, if majority of my list on prop stream are like that, is that okay? Because majority of list what kind of list are you pulling? Vacant you land pull? on Detroit. I mean, sure. Um, you then try, try it. Switch to another one? I mean, try oh, it, but yeah. you already know how land works, dude. You got to get very, very, very deep discounts. And if it's a realtor, the chance of it's being a deep discounts is not going to be as high. Because I did try to search their number up on like truepeoplesearch.com, but then I tried to search their number up on like Zillow and all. Like it's just a different number. And I thought like your realtors, their phone number should be pretty easy. It's kind of their job. Yeah. Okay. And also another question is like on PropStream, when it shows like the comparables, like suppose the house is like $70,000, but comparables show like $30,000. Should the offer price be below the comparable price on PropStream? Say that one more time. Oh yeah, no problem. I say like suppose the house is like seventy thousand dollars, but on prop stream on comparable section, it shows that the comps are around like thirty thousand dollars. So should I should my offer price be below thirty thousand dollars or around? It's based that? on the comps, dude. Like that's how we figure out ARV, not estimated value, just by comps. Uh oh, okay, okay. So I could use that as my ARV. Okay. Yeah, you don't. You don't look at an estimated value and that's what it's worth. You got to look at comparables. That's how real estate works. Okay. Now, if you're doing okay. land, is this for land? No, it's like for vacant land. Oh, no, not vacant though. Sorry, vacant houses. Yeah, do comparables on the houses. That'll help you. That'll be way better. Detroit's weird. Do, do houses okay. Okay. do the estimated value. They're always inflated. Okay. And lastly, so I've been doing a lot like some wholesaling deals and recently... Uh, I don't know why this keeps on happening. I uh, the seller we agreed on a contract and all, and I sent her the contract. I said, "I'll uh, let me know when you're done." And I called her like two days later, and her phone number is deactivated. And I tried everything I can, and I don't know why this keeps happening. It's like the second time that happened to me. So I was wondering like what I can do better so that doesn't happen again. You message them on Facebook. They're a realtor. They should I have tried to, but I'm not sure if that's the right person. Like I searched up the name. It has like no pictures or anything. And like, I was like kind of skeptical if I'm like mystery message. Email them. They're wrong. Uh, I did that. And they don't, you're probably going to ignore. Most realtors are very available. No, no, they're not realtors. This is a different story. I'm just saying. Okay. Like this is, I called this person from Zillow and. He was, she was saying that she was interested in selling that property. I'm like, okay, we did agreed on a price. Uh, I sent up the contract 
And then I called her back two days later to wondering if she signed the contract or not. And then when I called her number, her number deactivated something. Oh, yeah. It was saying that. Yeah, you just got ghosted, dude. Did you, so did you like, condition them for a yes or no decision? Yeah, I did that. I did. did you like, I told them when you sent the contract. Okay, oh, say that again. Did you stay on the phone with them when you sent the contract? Yeah, yeah. I went over the contract with them. And they signed it. Yeah, I just I went over them and then I said I'll sign it and send it to you through email. And then I Hold called it back every Ravon, two days. Did they sign the contract? Yeah. Uh no. I just went over the contract and then I yeah. Bro, you literally ran a a 5k and then the last four steps you just sat in your butt and decided not to go through the finish line you stay on the phone till they sign that's the point that's what i teach at freelancing.com you stay on the phone till they sign because if you can't get past the finish line you didn't finish the race uh, once they sign now they're stuck with you right they didn't sign uh, it though so that's your fault I hate to say okay. it, but like you have to stay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You okay. stand on the phone, but the point of staying on yeah. the phone is so they sign it, not to go over it. So they sign it. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. All right, now I know. Go through the course, man. That dang dude, that stinks. It's fine. Now I know. Now I know. Yeah, you're you just got ghosted. That's pretty normal. When you don't okay. do that, that's why I tell everybody to stay on the phone until it's signed, so that doesn't happen to you. But like, how are you doing this especially virtually? Like, do I tell them to, because I do it through cam scanner or something like that. I like take a picture, put my signature on it, send them through email. And so like, do I tell them, hey, get the same app or it's hard to do it for, over dude, virtually. You, you know? There's a DocuSign. There's an Adobe uh, e-signing mm -hmm. thing. There's a million, there's Panda something. There's a million e-signing okay. services out here. What you do, this is literally the script of freehosting.com. Hey, Mr. Seller, I'm going to send yeah. you. So are you, so are you ready to make a yes or no decision? Yes, I'm ready to make a yes or no decision. All right. What price works for you? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, agree to $50,000. Okay. That's great. What I'm going to do is send you over an agreement right now to your email. Let me know when you get it. I got it right here. Okay. Well, let's go over together and let's sign the agreement. Okay. They read through it. They read through it. It might take you 45 minutes. Okay. I signed it. Great. The point is, stay on the phone. It's so they're so annoying. You're on the phone. They're just gonna sign it to get you off the stinking phone. Okay. That's it. Hey, I'm sending. Uh, you, I'm sending you over the agreement right now. Let me know when you get it to show that you're gonna stay on the phone. Okay, I see. Because what mostly happened is, oh, that's not bad. do you know what an unanswered objection is? No. An unanswered objection is. The worst thing, an unanswered objection is the biggest red flag ever. It shows that mm -hmm. it's just, it's terrible. If you can't answer an objection, you're not going to get through the deal. It's going to kill your deal. So what most likely happened okay. was they got the contract. They had a question about the contract probably. And since you weren't on the phone to instantly answer their objection, this is a scam block. What's inspection period. That sounds like a scam block. No, I, you I actually answered then the contract. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I, but they I had the question. They read it again and probably had a question, and you weren't there to answer it. Uh, so you okay. had an unanswered objection, which killed your deal. That's what happened. Okay. All right. Now I know. <laughs> now I know. Okay. Hate for you. If you went through the course, you didn't have to deal. You didn't have to go through that stress. But unfortunately, you had to learn yeah. the hard way. But at least you learned it. All right, and then like you also said, try to include like um, what's that for um. How to like on top of like MCTP also include like their workplace, their dreams, stuff like that. Like yeah, is that also part of the reason? Ford, Ford method. Ford, F O R D. Ford. Yeah, 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 I didn't and do that. So that's why recreation I, dreams. How would you like connect that? Like if I'm because I'm mostly just focused on like MCTP. Like how do I connect to motivation to like Ford or? Condition? Why you know the like, property, Ravon? What do you do for a um, living? Is it going to affect that? Is that going to affect when you got to sell the property? Okay. Do you have family in Minnesota? Is that why you're looking to sell it? Oh, right. Okay. Oh, it's okay. getting cold there. Like, I mean, I love fishing here in Florida. Like, what are you going to do? Uh, what do they got there in Minnesota? Right. I just got through okay. all three of them. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. I see. I see. Make all it right. simple. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Zach. Appreciate it. Have a great one. You too. Boom. All right.
Tristan. Hey, what's going on, man? I'm blessed, man. How are you? Give me one second. Let me put my headphone in. All righty. All right. Can you hear me? I'm clear. What's up? Hey, man. Um, just want to ask you real quick. Um, so I'm, I'm getting these offers for this property I was telling you about on Sunday, and it's looking good so far. Um, but I came across a guy that, um, you know, he's he's going to be signing the assignment of contract, but he's getting money from a hard money lender. Is that a red flag or no? Yes, red flag. Okay. Okay, cool. We, we, call them, we, we don't call them hard money buyers. We call them cash buyers, right? Okay. So I would why it, buyer. Yeah, no, that I have one lined up and we're getting a walkthrough on uh, on Saturday or sorry, Sunday. And um he's a cash buyer, but he just came across another guy came across and I was just wondering. So Tristan. Yes, sir. My my eleven year old cousin can get a hard money letter for you. Okay. <laughs> like anyone get a hard money letter, okay, dude. So like I you can't once you get a hard money, you can't figure out if they're legit or not. Okay. It's all smoke and mirrors. That's the problem with it. So I need cash, right? My 11 year old cousin doesn't have 500 grand in the bank account right now. So like I can tell they're not going to buy it. Right. But anybody get a hard money letter, anyone. So yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's Some gurus even include it with their mentorship. So you can go uh, <laughs> JV deals off of Tristan. Right. And if it doesn't work, Hey, Tristan loses the money, but whatever. Right. That's how it works. So just be very protective of it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I don't want to see you uh, lose your deal. Hell yeah, man. Oh, well, yeah. That's all I had for today. So that clears some stuff up. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. You too. Uh, Amir, I don't look at bad comments, <laughs> I only look at the good ones. <laughs> Um, all right, what is up? Hey, Zach, how are you? Brooklyn, New York. Awesome, what's up? Um, question is I know that I'm in a saturated market. Uh, I was gonna go into uh, uh, New Jersey, <laughs> but um, or any other virtual market. I was a uh, question is about boots on the ground. Um, if I were to go to New Jersey or just stick in a competitive market, and I know a lot of uh investors in brooklyn cash buyers so uh although it's saturated but can make a pretty buck less deals but more money per deal what do you think i'd go virtual i don't know enough people in brooklyn i, I know the population of brooklyn mm -hmm. and the population is not equivalent to the amount of people doing very well in brooklyn in real estate investing and wholesaling so i would say virtual mm. Okay, so how would you go about finding somebody boots on the ground? In where? other words, uh, even a jersey. I don't know. I, or I would go to uh, Virginia. All What's right, that? let's say Virginia. You go to Facebook and you go to the Virginia Jobs or Gigs group, Craigslist, Facebook. Just find people that mm -hmm. want to work. Got it. They have a got to have a car. Mm -hmm. Got it. Car and a okay. Plane. Perfect. Uh, regarding a question, a discussion you had with the, uh, with the first person you spoke with, do I, do I stay on the phone to get them on the contract even before I saw the house or? What do you mean sold the house? Um, the last guy you spoke to, or actually two people uh, before this one you spoke to, um, you said you stay on the phone, you know, for them to actually fill out and sign the contract. Is that, is that on the first initial phone call? No. Or that's after you see the house. Got it. Not, not after you see the house. So for virtual wholesaling, the whole process is cold call, call them back to get some information, call them again, see if they're willing to make a decision to sell the property. Yes or no. If they are agree to buy a property for a certain price, lock it up from there. I have a boots in the ground. Go take pictures of the property. Right. Mm -hmm. And then from there, cash buyer boots in the ground. And then boom, 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 assign it, make a bunch of money. So that's always the way I do it. All right. Amazing. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in the beginning. I'm up to the podio um, lesson and uh, excited, bro. Can't get the, uh, appreciate all the free content you provide and the wonderful service. Of course, man. Love to help people out. So just remember, it's all about 
the marketing. And then you kind of go from there. You do the closing from there. And then when you close the seller, then you get the boots on the ground, the pitchers. Because what's the point of getting pitchers if you're not going to close the deal? It's just a waste of money. And then mm. after that, cash buyer assignment, good to go. All right. Amazing. Thank you so much for all the value you provide. Very, very appreciate it. Appreciate it. Have a great one. Thanks. You too. Take care. Oh, um, take care. All right. Next we got Corey. Hi. Hey, Zach. Um, yeah. So I just uh, started recently getting into the actual virtual wholesale. I've been doing research on it for, you know, about a year now, but I was waiting until I got money saved up. But so I just got, I started my uh, free trial on prop stream. And I was practicing pulling list and stuff, and I got an absentee owner um, high equity list, and it was about five thousand leads. Now, obviously, it said that I wasn't allowed to pull a list until I got rid of my free trial. Okay. Uh, but is five thousand? Because I have a couple grand, you know, to spend on marketing, so I really want to just start cold calling, and you know, even if I spend a little bit of money on it. But is a five thousand lead list uh, pulled off PropStream a good list to start skip tracing and cold calling, or is that going to be too much on, like too much money spending on skip tracing starting out? Depends what you want to do, man. Right. So, what is it? Um, let's see. So, five thousand would be six hundred bucks. So, I mean, depending on what you want to do, dude, uh, what market? So, I was actually looking at your videos, and I was going to try the Pensacola area of Florida. Okay. And where do you live? I live in Pittsburgh. So, like, in Pittsburgh, PA. Do Pittsburgh. Yeah. Do Pittsburgh. Yeah. Really? Because there's, a, there, like, because I was going to do driving for dollars and stuff around Pittsburgh. But the mm -hmm. problem was is they were saying that there were certain laws with, like, contracts and stuff that the seller you should, that you should give up then. Huh. It's a joke, bro. Dude, yeah. I know a lot of people in Pittsburgh. I know three people making over 100K in Pittsburgh. Virtually or just driving for in dollars? Person. In person. They live in Pittsburgh. Oh, wow. Okay. Who told you? What lawyer told you you can't wholesale in Pennsylvania? No, I, I knew I could wholesale in Pennsylvania, but I wasn't sure about the deals aspect because, like, say I got a property under contract. When I sold the contract, like, to the uh, um, cash buyer – the person that was selling me the contract, they had to know exactly what wholesale fee that I was making off the cash Who, buyer. The cash I, buyer? Yeah, unless I double close. The cat no, the yeah. seller. What law says that? Uh it was a new law in the county that I live in, Allegheny County, because too many wholesalers in my area were Who told making, you that? uh I was reading all the laws on the internet uh in my state and counties surrounding me. And that's what they're saying. So that's why I kind of pushed away Who from it. Who is saying it? The internet from the Mr. Laws. Internet or Mrs. Internet? I don't know. I just, you got to show me the law, dude. Okay. But so then, because if you're, will your wholesale contract work in Pennsylvania though? Like do people use your. You got to ask the title company, right? Oh, okay. So that's who I would ask for it. Yeah. It's just. Hey, that. does this contract work for wholesaling? Okay. Find a wholesaling friendly title company in Allegheny County, wherever. Is that Pittsburgh's county? No. Well, Allegheny's outside of Pittsburgh. Yeah, I live 20 minutes north of Pittsburgh. I live in Cranberry. But Allegheny County and Butler County are where I live. So I would probably more be in the Allegheny aspect, Allegheny County area as far as doing the wholesale if I was going to start driving for dollars and stuff. But whenever I read that, I was like, I didn't know. Because, you know, if I'm going to get a 15,000 closing deal in the seller. Why don't you ask a title company and they can okay. give the actual law and not the internet? Okay. Because there's so lawyers just, at title companies that deal with assignment fees. So I want to go to Facebook groups and find the top title companies for real estate investors and ask them and they'll tell you. Okay. Okay. Because they have lawyers and lawyers know a lot more about laws than I do. Okay. You, wholesale in Pittsburgh though. Worst case scenario, you can double close it. But here's, I'll tell you how these laws work, man. If you could show me the law, I would love to look it up. Do you, do you remember where you read that law? No, I because it was whenever I was actually going to start driving for dollars uh, two years ago was when I've been researching this for a while. Um, so it was two years ago when I was going to do it. And like I said, they said that I can't remember what source because it was so, so long ago. But they were saying that because wholesalers in the Allegheny County area were taking like hundred hundred twenty thousand dollars profit off of homeowners. Now, like the homeowner that's selling you the property that's signing the contract, 
they have to know exactly what profit you're making to the cash buyer and the cash buyer knows too. So like if you're about to make the, you know, a 20, $25,000 wholesale deal and the owner sees that you just sold it to a cash buyer for $25,000 more, are they going to back out of the contract? But obviously since they signed the contract, I feel like they can't do that at that point, right? They can't back out. I'll tell you, there's only one law in Pennsylvania about this, and that was in uh, Pennsylvania, uh, uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia, yeah. And the funniest part about the Philadelphia one was if you intend to wholesale it, then you then you have to do it or spend like a little license. But if you intend to buy it cash, then you don't have to. And it's all about intention. And so there's not been one enforcement of that law, but so that law doesn't work at all. Let's see here. Okay. Well, I'm then I'm trying to read this thing and I can't find it. Um, I think this law. Um, yeah, you can't start private enterprise on anything. They tried. Council does not halt the regulation. The council's motion does not do anything to halt or regulate such sales, but it calls the state legislator to do so. So they're trying to stop it, but that's just because it's a county, and a little council has literally no- nothing they can do on it. So okay. All right, let's look at this. I got some, God, I'm going to go to Reddit for this. Um, it's a strongly worded letter. Yeah, it's a, it's a letter to the council, okay? Okay. Yeah, it's a, it, they approved a motion to send a letter, it says here, to Harrisburg, which is the state. Senate. So it's not approved yet, so it doesn't even work. It's, it's a motion to do something. It's okay. like when Congress did a motion to support the people uh, dealing with war. It's yeah. a motion to show their support. Okay. Wow, okay. that's a law. It's not going to do that. Pennsylvania is very um, – it's a very purple state. And so if, if you have a little council of, of a city, they're not going to do anything. Okay? They can't okay. actually make laws on it. So okay. no. Okay? You, to change real estate laws, you would actually have to go and change the actual state law. It's the state okay. that I've So yeah, okay, that, you're yeah, fine. Ask the title companies. I actively know three wholesalers making over six figures in okay. Pittsburgh. So maybe they, maybe they're in jail right now. Maybe I'll talk to them behind bars right now. But well, no, now, not, that, you, doing now well. that you read that, it makes a lot more sense. Like you said, when I was reading that, I was new. So like it all seemed like very like, you know. Do you see the problem when you say that people flip out and then I got to actually look at the real law? Yeah. All right. Like it just, it's kind of funny, right? But like, it's like, all right, I'm not getting political, but like, I know the city council of Seattle did a motion to like stop, uh, you know, greenhouse gases or something like they're not going to stop the oil companies in Oregon and do it. Like they just made yeah, a motion to do something right. Uh, save the seas day in Florida the city might make a motion on it. It doesn't do anything. Okay. okay? Yeah. It, city council people, they just want to feel like they're doing something. You can't change real estate laws. Okay. We have a constitution in the United States of America. Because we have an amazing constitution with the contract clause in the constitution stating that citizens have the free right to write contracts and deal with them. That means I can sell the contract for a profit, which is all about wholesaling real estate because we have the constitution. Boom. Okay. All right, I get really crazy because I haven't seen one law that stopped wholesaling. I haven't seen one. So yeah. no, like I said, I read that and it wasn't like I could still get around it, obviously. You know, I was just so new that it's you know, emotion. I, yeah. But no, I'm glad you told me that because I mean I'm not very good with politics and laws and stuff, you know. So I don't really pay too much attention to all that stuff, but um I'm glad you told me that because now I can just I, I won't be worried about going in my market. But that was the only reason that I was gonna ask your title forward. company to make sure, but there's not one law in here. Okay. Um, Let's see. Yeah, it's a motion to request to pass legislation to okay. regulate wholesaling, which did not do anything because uh, they don't care. Okay. Because it to change the law would be such an insane thing to do, and, and it take too much work. So yeah, we have the constitution. You're fine. Okay. Um. And then, so if I was going to start off, um, you'd obviously recommend driving for dollars then in the Allegheny County and stuff. Yep. Um, and then if I was going to do that, would you recommend using the prop stream or the deal machine for the driving for dollars, you know, to mark the properties in those Use Whatever you want. Okay. Okay. Uh, that should be all then. Yeah, man. Get it going, dude. I would do reverse drawing for dollars probably. That'd be my favorite. 
for you to do, but with like putting uh, sticky notes on the doors and waiting for them to call me. Yep. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And then look up uh, all of the Pittsburgh wholesalers and go after it, man. Okay. I'm glad right. I do a shakedown on you today to get you to actually start going at a good market, dude. Yeah, no. Well, I, like I said, I because all of that, I was just going to try going virtually because, you know, but after you told me that, because I've heard of some people doing well in Pittsburgh, but then there's been other people that haven't. So that's why I kind of was just going to go to a new market that I really only heard of people doing in Florida and stuff. So that's what I was going to go to Florida, but. Talk to a legit lawyer at a company. It won't cost you anything, and they'll tell you. Okay. And that's it. You'll be fine, man, because there's probably title companies that are doing five to 10 transactions every single month of just assignments in Pittsburgh because it's a decently sized city. Yeah. And if they're doing it, then it's legal because they have a lawyer stamping it over. So you're good. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you. I what do really you got to do? Tell me what you got to do. I got to call a title company and you know make sure Not that a title, you got to find a title company that is it. selling on okay, Facebook yeah. and then call them up. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Zach. I appreciate it. All right. It. Have a good one. Boom. If you have questions, I'm always here to help. Some of y'all need a shakedown. Start wholesaling locally. It's always the best one. Sosa. Yo, Zach, what's going on? What's up, man? I um, remember, the, remember the deal that I was just um, talking to you about, about, about the um, lady being probably had to reach out to the stepson. Well, long story short, the stepson name is on it. But he All is right. looking, but he is looking to sell though. But he got something going on with his daughter that he adopted. But long story short, is the lady that I spoke to first, she just sent, sent me a picture Hello. that the property. Oh, hold on, I'm calling right now. I'm put this on phone. Wrong number. My bad, I forgot to pause mojo. You're Put good. Over. Yeah, so yeah, I'm on it right now. But um, yeah, so she sent me she sent me a text a link of letter saying that it's going to option on the six. I, I just call him, he ain't pick up, but I let him know that it's going to in the on Please leave six. your message can I, for eight one three. Can I oops get back or this in North Carolina? Say it again. The tax delinquents is okay, going okay. in the option December sixth. I talked to the owner, he's willing to sell. I just talked to him um basically we finna get the price. For us to get it locked up, but he answered. But I'm trying to see, am I go have enough time to still close on the deal if the auction start on the sixth of December? Yeah. I mean, if you have a cash buyer, then sure, talk to a title company about. It. They can help you out a lot better than I can. Yeah. But you're gonna have to go pretty quick, man. All right. All right. So I don't know the specific it's... laws for that, for where you're at with it. So I just gotta see. Every county is a little different how they handle it. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know in Florida you can push um like the payout more you can push that back. But that's what I was trying to see. That's so I'm just trying to lock them up ASAP and um get into the title company though. Lock it up, bro. Yes, sir. All right. Um, appreciate it. Appreciate you, man. Have a great one. Yep. Boom. All right. So we got Miles. Hey Zach. Um, so I'm I'm brand new to wholesaling. Uh, I just awesome. had a few questions. So I've been kind of researching it since like the first of October, but I've had a few homes where, so I'm in the uh, Northern Utah, Brigham city area. Um, I've had a few homes that I can't really find comps for. And, but they've re previously had it on the market and their deal fell through for financing or whatever. But the uh, previous person that had it under contract with them ran an appraisal would it be worth going off that appraisal for the ARV or no? When? So uh, on this most recent one, they had an appraisal done like a month ago. Okay. For how much? 410. It's okay. a, it's a four bedroom, two and a half bath, uh, like 2,300 square feet. And how much was it listed for? Uh, they had it listed for 390. Okay. Off from 275. 275. I don't know. Well, so if it's 390 and they couldn't sell it, no one's willing to pay more than 390 for that. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. But so I kind of went through it. It doesn't really need a whole lot of prayers. It just needs a couple 
bathrooms and then all the windows to be updated. Um, so I was, when I kind of went over based off of that 410 appraisal, I was coming up with 300 to 320s, my MAO. That's, but it's pretty good, actually. Okay. But would it be worth going off of that appraisal for my ARV? No. Appraisals are stupid. Okay. That's kind of that. Free um, market has decided it's not worth more than 390. Yeah. yeah, yeah appraiser yeah. says it's worth it, but is did the appraiser actually offer his actual? No. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Right. Uh, the free market's the best appraisal, right? So yeah. it's not worth more than 390, which means to a cash buyer is probably, in my opinion, not willing to pay more than 330, 340 for it. Okay. And that's, that's pushing, what I was thinking. That's pushing it. I think 320 is a good MAO. Uh, so I'd yeah. be at 275, 280, and then push me up to 320, right? Okay. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. And then my other question is so I'm in Bram City, Salt Lake's probably about an hour south of me. If I was doing to do local, am I in a good enough market to do local? What is it called? Bra- Braden? Brigham City. It's about an hour north of Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, population's not that big. Um, yeah, it's kind of getting on the outskirts of rural country. Yeah. Um, I was thinking of going down to like Ogden, Utah, and maybe dipping into Salt Lake for driving for dollars, but I would probably stick to Ogden. Ogden, okay, yeah, that's big enough. Okay, but that's a good enough market to stay local and not start virtual yet. Yeah, no, no, that, that that's great. You're okay, fine. okay, um, but for something like that, if I tried to stay under that three hundred market, would probably be a good deal. Yeah, I, th- I think that'd be a good deal. Okay, stay local. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Of course. Got any other questions? Uh, not, I think you answered uh, the DNC already. Um, oh, s- calling on Saturdays. Everything that I've seen for Utah is for like telemarketers and stuff. It specifically states I have to call only Monday through Friday, that eight to nine. Can I call on Saturdays? I can't really see anything that says yay or nay. From the research I've done. Oh, let me pop up the TA, uh, TCPA laws. Um, let me pop it up for you. I'm getting the actual law law for you. So you okay. So let's look at the actual law for telemarketing. So let me pop it up really quick. Okay. So here's the law from the FCC. Let me scroll through this really quick. No auto dialing, blah, 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 blah. Um, it has a certain dates, dates on it. Hold on. Action by states. No junk faxes. That's probably one of these up here. Make calls for emergency purposes. Hold on, let me see the other law. It says here, um, is, yeah, I, I think it's per day. I think you're fine on Saturday. Okay. Yes, because okay. it says here right here. Uh, you can't call anyone before the hour of 8 a.m. or after 9 p.m. Yeah, and see, that's what I've seen. But I've, And I saw a few places saying Monday through Friday, but... No, I think you should be fine. Okay. Um, and then where I'm just barely starting out, I've uh, found a title company. I have about three cash buyers. Is there really any pointers on... So, so I went, I went driving for dollar, dollars uh, this last Saturday, but a lot of the houses that I'm seeing in the North Ogden area, which is Ogden, North Ogden, Pleasant View, that's all kind of the same zip code. Um, a lot of the houses, they're not really run down. It may have like outdated windows, like the old style double pane windows. Is there stuff that I should be looking for when I'm trying to drive for dollars other than maybe outdated windows? Because 
there's not really much with tall grass, especially now here in the winter. Oh yeah. Um, I'm not really seeing anything run down or stuff like that. And I spent probably a good two or three hours driving through neighborhoods. Yeah. Your, your top thing you're going to do is I would probably pull code violations. Okay. I'd probably pull some pre foreclosures and then I would just go reverse dry for dollars, those areas. Okay. Um, can I pull those, uh, government lists off of prop stream? Cause I do have prop stream. Yeah. You do pre foreclosures, uh, code violations. No. Okay. You might just go to the government and ask. Okay. Donnie's in Ogden, but do that one. Okay. And that should be a general area where you can do it. I think on PropStream, you can also upload a list and then drive that. Okay. But for, when I'm actually driving it and looking for houses. Stick if, to pre-foreclosures and go in those areas. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Cool. I think that's everything I had. All right. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yep. Bye. Oh, let's see here. It's Reggie. What is up? Yo, what's going on, Zach? How's it going? I'm blessed, man. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good about yourself. I'm good, man. How how can I help you out? Well, um, uh, let's just start off. Um, I'm new to wholesaling. I've gotten into this this Monday, uh, or actually Sunday. Actually, I was doing the course. Finished it today. Uh, I have my notes and everything ready to go. I just wanted to ask you about um, t- the Texas market. Do you know anything about Texas? I live in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. I don't mind going to Dallas, Arlington, Burleson, or uh, driving around in those places. Um, and uh, I was just wondering what your thoughts on the Texas market. Texas is a good market. I'd stick to Fort Worth, just this local where you're at. But mm-hmm. trying for dollars works a lot there. It's a tad saturated, but it's not the worst, right? You can definitely get a lot of deals there. Okay. All right, then. And then uh, also, um, and then for the title company, uh, I pretty much have everything ready. Uh, I'm starting to look for one actually now. Uh, today, um, I was wondering, uh, is it, I wouldn't say, uh, is it mandatory to, or what's the reason of getting a dialer? Is there any reason of getting a dialer? Because I know it's a lot easier to get calls and get calls going through, but um, and also recording your calls. But is there any other reason in that of getting a dialer or? Well, you can record your calls, right? You have a professional voicemail. And also you can track your KPIs. You can also track, you also track the way the calls coming in, the calls coming out of it too. So I think it makes it a lot easier, right? Because if you get calls from a business cell, you know, it's a business call versus a personal, right? Just makes it mm-hmm. a lot easier, right? So yes. that's the way I do it. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Then it's free. Yeah, like Google Voice, it's free. So, yeah, that's the one I was going to try using. I was actually, actually going to also do Mojo, see, uh, and, and Zen sure. call. I wouldn't say and, but, you know, test them out, get the seven day free trial, see what it's like, and then uh, go through them and choose. Zen call's not a thing anymore. Oh, it's not? No. Oh, okay. Okay. It's called Ready yeah, Mode so- now. They changed the name. Okay, then yeah, I'm about to change it my like search a year on ago, that. Dude. Uh, well, well, you know, I just got into this and and you know, doing my research now. And uh, I wouldn't say doing my research. I'm actually done with the research now. I'm taking action, and I'm gonna start cold calling tomorrow. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all my questions that I have for you. Awesome, man. We'll go after, dude. Mm-hmm. You know, you know what to do. Yes, sir. Most definitely. All right, keep it up, man. Thanks. Have a good one. Oh, I'm awesome. Uh, next here we got Trey. How you doing, Zach? Every bit, every day above ground is an amazing day. Yes, sir. How yes, are sir. you? I'm doing good. Um, I had a um, few questions. Um, awesome. so me and my partner, um, uh, we actually became partners about four weeks ago. Um, I had wholesaled him a deal in Baltimore. Um, and he liked my persistence. Um, sending him deals, and he actually he's you know, a big um, fix and flipper. Um, he wanted to add wholesaling, you know, to his um journey. So we have partnered up on it. And, you know, we have the cold callers. Uh, we have two right now. Um, we're doing mailing. Um, but, you know, we haven't gotten a deal yet. Um, he feels like there's something we're missing. Cause we have, you know, we have the money for the marketing, but, um, we are currently in four different markets. Um, we're actually located in the DMV area. 
Um, I know we're in Tennessee, North Carolina, and Georgia. So my question is, um, how should we, um, what should we do to get more um, motivated um, sellers? I mean, we're pulling lists. I'm pulling lists from PropStream, skip tracing through batch, um, doing code violations, you know, tax liens, and out-of-state owners. Okay. You want to get into it? Yeah. All right. You said you're in four markets. What are the markets? Um, the DMV area. Um, so we are Where? in Northern, Where DMV? Northern Virginia. Like Arlington, Alexandria? Yeah. So, yeah, we're in Arlington, Alexandria. Okay. Manassas and Gainesville and in Maryland we are in like Temple Hills, but that's the um Capitol Heights. Yeah. You know, and certain areas in Baltimore we are in also. Okay. I, I consider that separate than DMV. So you got DMV, Baltimore. Um where are the other ones? Tennessee, we just got in that market. We're in um, Tennessee. Nashville and it's one more place I can't think of the name. Start with a C. Um, Chattanooga. Yes, there. Okay, that's. F oh wait, wait. All right, all right. DMV, Baltimore, Chattanooga, Nashville. That's four. Those are separate markets. All right, what's the yeah. fifth one? And the fifth one, um, we are exploring Georgia, and actually we're exploring Florida too. Um, I have a um, homeowner that's from Bradenton. Okay. Florida, and right now we're we in Georgia. Um, Columbus, Columbus, Georgia, good market. All right. Yes. We have like six or seven markets, dude. I'm just yeah. Chattanooga and Nashville are completely different. Like Chattanooga is way better. Just being honest. Nashville's a little overpriced. Okay. Um, so just that being said, you have seven markets. How many deals are you doing a month? You uh, now we're not doing none. Me. So why are you in seven markets? If you're doing none. Okay. So me, I have done, I've been doing wholesaling for probably about a year um working as a working my nine to five with it now i'm at it full time and i was doing deals like here and there every other month just like one deal um okay. and there were you know i want to say my profits probably were less than 10k a month basically um so I was all and these was all virtual i wasn't i'm from virginia so they were in different markets North Carolina, West Virginia, where the markets I was usually in. Okay. Well, let me be honest with you. A jack of all trades is a master of none, right? Yes, sir. If you got too, you're spreading your wings too much and like it's, it's, you're, it's too much going on, man. If you focus on one market, you can make, get that to a hundred K and then start expanding. Okay. Okay. Like, I, I had to make millions of dollars in my local market before I started spread out. Cause I need that infrastructure in place. Yeah. What you got to do is you're building a pyramid, right? Okay. It might look really cool, but your base is so terrible that if you take one little block off, the whole thing crumbles. Yes. You need a really solid base, which is the one market. So where's your partner out of? Um, he's out of um the um Northern Virginia area. All right. So, what does your partner bring that you don't have? Um, the marketing budget, the funds. Okay. Pretty good. So what I want you to do is you really got to break down these markets. I, I'm just telling you, who's the acquisitions person? It's just two people, right? Yeah, it's basically me, yeah. You're going to go crazy trying to do seven markets at a time. Like I, I'd really stick to one market and then expand it from there. What kind of list are you guys pulling? Um, we're pulling vacant, um, tax liens, um, uh, code violations, you know, out-of-state owners. Okay. And what's the median uh, marketing channel? Um, we're doing, um, well, what do you mean? Like for like. Are you cold calling, texting? Cold calling, cold calling and mailing. Who's cold calling? Uh, we have two VAs. Okay. And are you currently doing seven markets? Uh, yes. You start calling them? All right. How long have you guys been doing this for? Uh, we've been at it for together for about three and a half weeks. Okay. So, I mean. Probably hasn't yielded any results. It's been three weeks, right? How many leads has that created for you? Um, 27. 27. Okay. And even closed any of those? Oh, uh, no. Maybe one or two are like warm, maybe hot leads. The rest are kind of cold. You know, most of the sellers, 
you know, trying to get that number there still at the retail price. Well, let me ask you a question. How many deals have you personally done wholesaling? I know you've been doing it for a year and a half. Six. Six. And what markets were all six of these in? Um, North Carolina and West Virginia. Were and and uh, so I did two in Virginia. They were in Roanoke, Virginia. Okay. And I did um, one and I was like one in Raleigh, and the rest were in Beckley, West Virginia. Beckley West. Okay. Why don't Why don't you do Beckley? How many were in Beckley, West Virginia? Uh, I want to say two. It was like two or three. Well, if you I, don't three deals in Beckley, West Virginia, why didn't you, Why don't you keep marketing there? Oh, uh, see, we we talked about that too. I don't know why I stopped. Um, you know, it was just hard trying to get the sellers to agree on your on my price because most of the buyers there was you know explaining to me like homes are cheap out there, so you need to get yeah. it for these numbers. So that's why I got out of the West Virginia market. Okay. I mean, I'm looking here, man. I think you got a lot of markets going on because if you pull the vacants at all of them, it's going to be harder just to build that um, base with the marketing. But honestly, you get still doing it. Like, What's your specific question? Like, What do you need the most help on? Um, Getting, well, closing deals, getting leads, more quality. Yeah. yeah. So to get more leads... And more deals, just to get more deals in general, it comes down to the list, the amount you're calling, and then the quality of the leads. Okay. So let's break them down. So you were pulling the vacant list, you said? Yes. Okay. Uh, what was the other list again? Um, vacant lists, um, tax liens, um, yeah, out of state, um, and senior owners. Why are you going after senior owners? Oh. Uh... I think I watched a video about it, about senior owners. Um, you know, my filters is probably like ownership 12 years or more. And then I put the senior owners. Um, okay, I've never told anyone to pull that list. Um, how many years ownership on the liens in Vancouver? Um, 10. 10? Who told you 10? Um, wholesale videos on YouTube. Just Okay. How's that going for you? Uh, well, most of the, like I said, the 26 leads, um, deals, the deals, how many deals have that led to you? Oh, nine, nine. Okay. So if you're going to listen to a guru, you're going to get guru results. There's a reason why gurus sell courses and they don't wholesale. All right. Yeah. 10 years is ridiculous. I would do three to five years. Okay. Most people that have a vacant property, three to five years is enough. 10 years. They're like holding on to it. Leans 10 is decent, I guess, but you're, you're leaving a lot of these leads just sitting there to dry. Three to five years is probably the most I would put on ownership. Uh, sorry, the minimum. Okay. Three, I'd probably put three years. That three. was my opinion. Are you going below the median home price in those areas for the values? Oh, uh, I'm not. I would do that because you're just you're, you're throwing leads away because you're just going after properties that are just worth too much. Okay. And you're wasting your time. Most cash buyers have a threshold of ARVs. Don't you agree? Yes. Find, find the threshold and then go below that. Okay. Because you could probably throw away a quarter of your list right now just for trash. Just being honest. And if you use that as quarter to add, like, let's say a tired landlord list and some just high, high equity, you would probably get more deals. Tired landlord and high equity. And get rid of the... So I would get below your median home price, the okay. ARV... Make sure the value is below that. I would do three to five years of ownership. Make sure it's not on market. Remove the duplicates. Um, I think that's going to help you a lot more. And I just think, and then get rid of senior owners. That's a stupid list, in my opinion. Okay. Um, and I don't feel comfortable going after people based on their age. But tired landlords, I'd add on top of that. And you would probably be 25 to 30% more efficient on your cold calling by just doing that. So it won't give you more leads, but it'll make you more quality. And that should lead you more results. Okay. And just focus on one market instead of expanding. I mean, if you already have the list, it's fine. Do it. But like, it's up to you. Okay. Like how many leads, how many skip trace phone numbers do you have right now? I want to say about 12,000. Okay. Maybe more. No, 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 no. But yeah. It's probably about 15. 
honestly. 15,000? Yes. Okay. How many um, hours are your VAs cold calling for? So they're calling Monday, about 40 hours, 40, 50. They call it Monday through Friday. 40 each? Um, so, no, I, so no, we split them up where they're split up from nine to one. And then the next one come on from four to eight. So What's their uh, script? Are you using a guru script? Uh, no, be just me. The, just the basic. Yeah, probably so. It's just the basic script. Yeah. What's their script? Is it a guru script? Yes, probably so. Um, and if you use a guru script, you get guru results. If you use a guru list, you're getting guru results. Okay. Go through the beginning of this video and just do that. You know why you're guru, you're getting guru results on the cold calling? No sir. Your VAs are what Filipino? Yes. They have accents, right? Yes. And if somebody's using a very long-winded script, it's very easy for an American to pick up an accent, right? Yes. And they're like, all right, no, no, I don't want to deal with this person. If you keep the script tinier and simpler and you leave the closing to Trey, who actually has an American accent, yeah. sounds very confident, you, do not want to use, you don't want to have your VA with an accent trying to do that stuff. It, it's terrible, right? Yes. Okay? And that's the point. Are you the owner looking to sell it? With an accent, it's actually sort of hard to pick up an accent when they're saying it that fast and with that script. Okay. Are you looking to sell it? Hey, let me talk to my partner, Trey. He'll give you a call back. Boom, then you close it. That's it. Okay. So get rid of the guru-ness. Put the Zach stuff in it. And I think you're probably 40% more efficient by just implementing what I said. Okay. And I think that'll lead you to some deals. Okay. All right, man? Yeah, so thank you, Zach. Think about it. Guru scripts equal guru results. Guru lists equal guru results. And these gurus are broke. I want you to make some money, bro. Sorry. Well, thank you so much for your advice. Right. Come back next week. Let me know what happened. Most definitely. I want to know. Most definitely. I, I will not forget. All right. <laughs> Most definitely. All right. Well, well, you're on replay, man. So, <laughs> all right. I will. Up, bro. All right. Thank you, Zach. Appreciate it. Guys, guru scripts equal guru results. And these gurus are broke. These gurus are broke. All right, guys, it, it, it's insane. Guru lists will make you guru broke. And I'm not saying this to be funny, but seriously, why do you think these gurus sell courses and do these crazy um, guru uh, Black Friday sales and all these things? Because they can't make money wholesaling houses. They have to make money selling courses because they're so bad at wholesaling because they use their scripts that it yields them terrible results. Why do you think I don't have to sell you a stinking course? Why do you think I don't have to charge your credit card to go buy and get information from me? Because I actually use my own scripts and that makes me rich. And if you want to be rich, you should use those results. I just, I don't understand what is so confusing for so many people out here, but Kai's got it. You know, guru scripts give you good results. I'm just telling you guys, if you come up, if you pull up on my live stream and say, I don't know why I'm not doing well, but I'm using guru information. This is why you're not doing well. It ain't rocket science. I could tell instantly he had a guru list because I never tell people to go after somebody based on their age. That's a terrible thing to do, first of all, in my opinion. And that just, it's not a good wholesaling list. 10 years plus uh, ownership. Like, come on. Like most sellers haven't owned a property for 10. Most people don't own a house for over 10 years. I would say like they buy and sell decently quick, right? 10 years is way too long. And most of my sellers own them maybe two, three, two, three, four years. Right? Like it's just like that, that you're, you're lead, you're missing so many leads on the table. So guys, I got the pen and paper. Like I would y'all, if you want to come up here, I will break down anybody's business. You're, you're paying for VAs. You're doing like, I will, I'll write it all down and give you an entire breakdown of like what's going wrong in your business. And I can help you out. And most people, I would, most gurus would charge a thousand bucks for a sit down convo that I just had a tray right there. I give it off for free because I ain't broke. Right. So, like, I want to help the people out because the reason why, let me just keep it a hundred with you guys. The reason why I just did that because I know there's probably five or 10 people watching live right now that are doing the same exact thing in their business. And that was hopefully a wake up call for them to stop their guru ways and to actually get the real ways to make some money. And how do you do it? 
You go to freelancing.com, you hop on the Black Friday sale, you get 50% off. So it's from $0 to $0 and you get it for free. That is the point. All right. I didn't say it. He said it. Well, I did say it. <laughs> it's true. See, write that down. These are important, important notes to be taking when I'm talking. When I say gurus are broke, you got to write that down. Okay. Guru equal broke. That's gem information. Those are gems I'm dropping. I just, you're getting so much great. <laughs> I can tell you guys, I, I can tell by anybody watching this, your results in cold calling by the action you take. And if your action is being terrible scripts and terrible lists, I can tell you straight up, this is why your results are bad. Action equals results. I've told everyone about this and I'll tell everybody forever about this, but your actions equal your results. So if I know for a fact if it's plural, if your actions are terrible, like if, if you're using bad scripts, bad language, like with your sellers, if your actions are bad, your results are bad. So if you want to get good results, do good action. And this is a very important part. And this is how I break down really a lot of people's cold calling businesses. It just depends on how much information that you're taking that you're going to use. And that's it, right? Kai's got this and I'll tell you straight up, like this is the way I talk. This is the way I explain it, you know? There's no way you can achieve a conversation and get a seller's intention in those super long guru scripts. The intros are like two paragraphs, seller going to hang up. Yes. Okay. The point guys is I have a psychological million dollar script that throws the seller off, makes them open to suggestions, and they're open to your suggestion of possibly you buying the property. It throws them out of the loop guys because I wholesale on a daily basis. I add like... Actively, people are probably cold calling with the script right now in my company. I haven't checked the stats today, but pretty, at any given time of the day, that script is being used by me. And for millions of people, not millions, but hopefully, I don't know, maybe a million people have used that script before for me. But like, it's true. So use the script. The two paragraph thing stinks. And most people got charged 50 bucks to even get the script. It's hilarious. It, it, it drives me crazy. Do not be using these guru scripts. Use the scripts I say and you'll do a lot better. Now, hey, maybe you have to go through some pain. of Use a guru script and use my script and do it for a month straight on each one and see which one yields better results. It is shocking. It is absolutely true. And guys, it, it drives me crazy. And I, I can rant about this all singing day long. But if you're not using the information in the scripts I say on this channel, then why are you even on this channel? And I'm not saying that because I'm telling you to like hop off or block me or whatever. You can do whatever you want. Like I could care less. I'm just trying to help the people that actually want to get helped. But I give this information and I give you the scripts and I, I tell you about all this stuff. I li like I literally share with you my stuff because this is the stuff that works for me. And if it works for me, it's most likely going to work for you. The stuff that gurus give you worked in 2007 before they quit wholesaling and became a full-time guru. Y'all, it's 2022. We're, we're, we're heading into 2023. Wholesaling real estate's changing. And if you're not listening to somebody that's actively doing this business and that can actually do real life stuff on the script, then I don't know what you're doing. So many wholesalers out here, they're not like, it drives me crazy. But I can tell you, if you don't want to wholesale real estate the right way, you'll be left in, uh, you'll be left in the dust. Okay. You got to get into wholesaling. You got, you can't listen to these gurus. You got to do wholesaling the right way. And stop listening to stinking gurus. It, it drives me crazy. You know what? Oh my gosh. All right. Get the information. Sergeant Doss has this, you know, hit that like button, guys. Go to freelancing.com. It'll help you out. But really, this is how you step-by-step -step do cold calling. I can only tell you that works for me. That's it. If you want to use someone else's thing, go use it. But I can tell you is do not come crying to me that it didn't work because I know it, I know it didn't work. I talk to people all the time. It doesn't work. The long-winded script, it drives me insane. But if you have the confidence, you have the right script in place, you have the right cash buyer, and you can have great conversations with people that want to sell the property for cash, you're going to end up doing very well in this business. So guys, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, if you guys have any thoughts, anything on this, um, love to help you guys out. Uh, I will be going live with Rick tomorrow. So Thursday, when everybody know this, YouTube's getting weird on the live streams thing. So like they're not showing the notification on the feed until the video is over. Oh, now it's popping up. It's a little weird. So guys, just so everybody knows the schedule for the week. Uh, 
I'm going with Rick tomorrow. We're going live uh, together. It'll be pretty fun. And then on Thursday, Turkey Day, I will be going live at my house. So, uh, yeah, so I'll be at my house. I'll go live from, let's do 12 to 2. 12 to 2 from my place. And we'll do some q and I'm going to talk about some important stuff about wholesaling. Uh, so we get the wholesaling information on ours, like live streaming with you guys. And then on Friday, it'll be Rick doing a live. So just me and Rick are tomorrow. I'll do my own live stream on Thursday. I don't know how many people are going to be on, but I'll be there, right? And uh, help as many people as I can possibly for wholesaling real estate. So go to freewholesaling.com. Got any value? Smash the like button, subscribe, and see you guys.